Uh, a very good day to you all. Welcome to part two of uh, October November session physics paper 2022. So we were number seven. Let's continue from where we left. Number seven A. What is meant by total internal reflection? So this is a condition when light the condition when light travels when light travels from denser medium from denser medium to less dense to a less denser medium to less denser medium and the incident angle is greater than or in and the incident angle is greater than the critical angle it's greater than the critical angle okay so we know what is total internal reflection when we have a situation let's say we have a line there then this side is a more denser side it's dense okay this side is the less dense so if we have a light if you have a light ray that is going there right if this angle let's say this is the normal if this angle is critical angle we know that the line will be refracted away from the normal at 90 degrees right on this top right at 90 degrees away from the from the normal but now once we go above the critical angle now we now have the critical angle above the critical angle so in other words, we're saying now this angle is critical angle plus. So it's greater than the critical angle. What happens is total internal reflection occurs, whereby it's reflected back. Always note that this will be the less dense medium, and this one will be the more, more dense medium. That's what we mean when we are talking about the total internal reflection. Okay? Now, uh, let's move to part B, one. Fix shows the light from a light source in a tank containing a liquid. Okay. The ray of light strikes the surface of the liquid at an angle X. The refractive index of the liquid is 1.5. Calculate the largest value of X for which the which total internal reflection occurs. Okay, so we know the condition of total internal uh, reflection that the angle of incident should always be greater than the critical, the critical angle. So what we have here we know that refractive index we know that the refractive index which is n is always equal to one over sine c where c is the critical the critical angle therefore sine c therefore sine c the sine critical angle is equal to one over n 1 over n. But remember, we are given that n is 1.5. Therefore, sine c is equal to 1 divided by 1.5. And c is equal to the sine inverse of 1 over 1.5. Sine inverse of 1 over 1.5. Then c, which is the critical angle, is equivalent to 41.8 degrees this value is showing the critical angle what does that mean this means that for example uh, if we i had more dense like this then i have a light that is going to the from more dense to the denser and this one will be the less one less dense it means that this angle will be refracted away from the normal at 90 degrees and this one is the critical angle. Now, in this case, we are being 
us to calculate the largest value of for the total internal reflection where total reflection total internal reflection can okay so this simply means that uh if i'm to put a normal here okay so you can see that from there to there is 90 degrees so we're being told that remember the critical angle is the one that will be done with the with the normal there okay so we're being told that the critical angle uh, the critical angle is 41.8 that's the critical angle the value of c here it's it's x therefore we want to find the value of x x is equivalent to sorry x is equivalent to 90 degrees which is this whole angle from there to there 90 degrees minus the critical angle this will give us x definitely therefore x is equals to 90 minus critical angle is equals to 41.8 minus 41.8 and x is equivalent to 48.2 degrees so this is the maximum uh, angle that we get we can only get anything that goes above even with one degree above this angle then there is total internal reflection so x is equals to 48.2 degrees okay let's go to the next question the speed of uh, light in air is 3 times eight, 10 to the power 8 calculate the speed of light in the liquid now uh, for this we use the formula we know that uh, refractive index if we are comparing the uh, speed of light in the vacuum and the speed of light in the medium so refractive index is equals to speed of light in vacuum divided by speed of light in that particular medium that we'll be talking about light in medium right speed of light in medium okay so we're being told we know that uh, we're given that the speed of light in uh, medium in light in vacuum sorry is three times 10 to the power eight meters per second okay divided by the speed in the the speed in liquid let me call it vl speed in liquid but we know the value of n so we have n is equals to 3 times 10 to the power 8 meters per second divided by by v the velocity in or in the speed in liquid sorry here it's 1.5 the value of the value of the refractive index is equals to 5 therefore i have to make vl subject to the formula which is the velocity in the liquid right therefore v now is equals to 3.3.0 times 10 to the power 8 which is the speed over the 1.5 which is the refractive index so if i divide the two i have 2 times 10 to the power 8 meters per second so the speed of light in the liquid is 2 times 10 to the power eight meters per per second okay so let's go to the next question which is number eight big 8.1 shows apparatus used to charge a metal plate by induction okay by induction so induction is basically inducing charge inducing charge describe and explain how the apparatus shown in fig uh, 8.1 can be used to charge the metal plate okay those are the apparatus that we have i'm seeing the positively charged rod there's a metal plate there's an insulator and there's a lead connected to to earth okay so i want to charge the metal plate so the first thing that i have to do here is to bring the plastic rod close to the metal plate okay bring The plastic rod close to the metal close to the metal plate okay so we are bringing this 
uh, positive charged plastic rod closer to this metal metal plate right when it comes closer remember this one is positively charged so a lot of positive uh, will be now close positive charge will be now very close what does that does that mean it means that in the metal plate in this metal plate all the positive are going to be repelled with these positive ions so all the positive ions are going to move to the left side and most of the negative uh, charges will move to the to the right to the right side due to the fact that uh, like charges repel and unlike charges attract so we then go here then you connect uh, actually electrons electrons of the metal plate will come closer to the to the rod of course then the electrons of the metal plate will come closer to the plastic rod okay they'll come closer to the to the plastic rod then after the electrons have moved closer to the plastic rod there's no problem we can now connect the lead to earth and just connect lead to earth this will lead more electrons more electrons more electrons will move onto the metal plate will move on to the metal plate so most of the electrons will then flow to the metal plate if we connect that uh, lead right we'll move to the metal plate then of course you then remove remove the earth and remove the the rod itself remove the earth and the rod move the earth and the rod then the net charge there the net charge net charge is negative so we have definitely the negative uh, the net charge is negative okay question fig 8.2 shows an electric circuit on fig 8.2 draw an arrow to show the direction of flow of electrons and explain how you determine the, the direction okay so we know that current flows in this direction obvious from the positive from the positive one it is the direction of flow of current right definitely if current is flowing in this direction it means that the electrons will be flowing in this direction so this is the arrow of the of the electrons so in order to show the flow of electrons so electrons will be flowing in this direction so this is the arrow that is that is required there okay let's remove this one okay that is the arrow that is showing explain why the reason is that electrons flow in the opposite direction to current always you must know that electrons electrons flow in opposite direction to to current before flow in opposite direction okay it's Fig nine shows the circuit. Nine point one shows the circuit with an alternating current AC supply, a resistor, and a diode. The frequency of the power supply is fifty hertz. Calculate the time period. Time period time for the one complete cycle of an AC supply. Okay, we know that time period is given by T, which is the uh, if we are to relate it with frequency, we know that frequency frequency is equals to number of oscillations in a given time which is one over t frequency is equal to one over one over t but we're being told that the frequency uh the frequency of the power supply is 50 hertz so it means if we are to make t subject of the formula we have t is equals to one over 50 seconds t is equal to one over 50 seconds which is zero 
0.025 seconds. Okay? 0.025 seconds. Now, the peak potential difference PD across the resistor is 340. Sketch a graph to show how the PD across the resistor varies with time for two cycles. Varies with time for two cycles. Okay? So for the first one, we know that uh, when we are talking about an AC, an AC is an alternating current, so it flows in both from the positive and the negative. So an AC will be flowing like this, right? Positive to negative, positive to negative. But now we are being, uh, the question is saying, sketch a graph to show how the PD across the resistor varies with time for two cycles. So from this point to that point, it's a cycle. We know that what is a cycle, right? A complete uh, revolution. From that point to point, that's where there's the wavelength, right? That's in cycle number one. That means a cycle number two is supposed to go to be here. So we have one cycle and the second cycle here, right? It is an AC, AC current. Remember? Okay. But now, I cannot leave it like this because there is a diode. It means that diode only uh, allows current to flow in one direction, right? This is the positive, which means here, one cycle has got how many seconds? Time period, we were told that each time period has got 0 0.02, 0 0.02 seconds, right? It means here it will be 0 0.04 seconds those are two cycles okay it means half cycle is equal to 0 comma 0 1 here it will be 0 comma 0 0 3 that point 0 comma 0 4 so sketch the graph to show that the uh, pd across the resistor varies with time for two cycles that is how uh okay so if we consider this we have a a diode in this question then the diode only allows current to flow in one in one direction however in a this is diagram showing an ac current flowing but we have a diode which means it cannot flow downward. so we need to remove all this this section okay all right then it will be left like that that is the diagram that will be showing two cycles with the uh, time for two cycles right label the pd the potential difference axis with which the value of the pd at the peak okay at the peak definitely we have uh let me at the peak it was said to be 340 340 volts okay then label the time axis with two values of of time Okay, that is the one that we were talking about. So here we find out that it was 0 0.01. There it was 0 0.02. Okay, so here it was 0 0.03. So label the time axis with two values of time. So you would put any two values, you could put this value, or even this value, and this value. Okay. Now let's go to the next question. A cloud chamber can be used to detect the alpha particles and the beta particles. Alcohol in the cloud chamber exists as a vapor. It condenses on iron produced in the air. This forms visible tracks. Fig 10.1 shows the tracks when a source of alpha particles and beta particles is present in the cloud chamber. Some of the tracks are short and thick. Other tracks are longer and thinner. State and explain which tracks are produced by alpha particles and which tracks are produced by beta particles. Okay, so we need to know the characteristics uh, of alpha particles and the characteristics of uh, beta particles. So by knowing the characteristics, I can tell that the alpha particles are shorter and thinner. Alpha particles, sorry, they are short, thick and short. Right, alpha particles, they are thick and 
then short okay the reason being these alpha particles they ionize more right you can say that they put more they are more ionizing ionizing and less penetrating and less pen penetrating okay then if we go on to beta particles the part with the beta particles are the ones that are thinner and longer thinner and longer right these ones now they've got less ionizing power less ionizing they are less ionizing but they are more they penetrate more and more penetrating don't forget that we say that the alpha particle in the, the, the sorry don't forget the differences between the alpha particle the beta particle and the gamma all those things uh, we've covered them okay so a radioactive isotope of sodium is used to detect leaks from water pipes a nucleus of this isotope of sodium contains 11 protons and 11 neutrons this nucleus decays by emitting the beta particle to form a nucleus of for magnesium describe what is meant by an isotope okay an isotope these are atoms of the same element okay atoms of the same element these are atoms of the same element with same proton number but different neutron number with same proton number but different neutral number that's why we have uh, hydrogen one one you can have hydrogen two this one called deuterium and you can have tritium you see that the the proton number is remaining is is one it's not changing is one right but here the mass is being affected because the neutral number is not uh, is changing okay so we can have different and many isotopes uh, of different elements okay let's go to the next question write down the nuclide notation for the decay of an isotope of sodium to magnesium isotope of sodium to magnesium remember we've been told that the sodium that we had has got 13 neutrons 13 neutrons so definitely we're going to have a sodium that has got a total mass of 24 and 11 because it is 13 neutrons right that's a very important thing to note there so what happens it goes that is decaying then it releases the beta but go always know that it's minus one okay plus and it's adding there nothing is changing there and 24 of magnesium and here it's adding so that it becomes 12 that's why it is magnesium because it is 12 right most of people they get confused what's happening here why is it that we have a minus 11 8 minus is it supposed to be 10 no because actually what we are having that the beta particle is coming out of the element so it's actually 11 minus minus one that's how we are getting 12 okay it doesn't subtract all right the isotope of sodium is a half-life of 15 hours so tf is 15 hours the isotope of magnesium is stable and does not undergo radioactive decay suggest why these properties of the isotope of sodium and the isotope of magnesium makes the isotope sodium of sodium suitable to detect leaks from water pipes okay so this one is simple we 
can tell that 15 hours that's enough to do to, for us to do what we want to do on the to test for the water leaks right so i can say uh yes half life is longer half life is long so it's possible to get that right what else can i talk about here okay the final product itself final product final product is not radioactive it's not radioactive it's not radioactive so no hazardous to not so no not hazardous to health so it is not hazardous to health Okay, let's go for the last question, which is number 11. Fig 11.1 shows a selenite connected to a battery. On Fig 11.1, draw the pattern of the magnetic field inside and outside the selenite, indicating the direction of the magnetic field with an arrow. Magnetic field with an arrow. Okay, so what we can simply do here uh we know that we have the direction of uh, current this is the direction of current current is good the field will be generated in this manner the field will be generated in this manner okay so the side create is the north side always let's save this where current is going to be the south side okay so always in the direction field goes from north to south the arrows they must show you that this field goes from north to to south so if we have a lot of these they keep on going like this having same direction we can simply tell that the direction of current is this one this is the arrow we were supposed to put there okay electrical power is transmitted at a voltage of 400 kilovolts the transformer reduces the voltage to 33 kV for use by heavier industries in large factories. The number of turns on the primary coil of the transformer is 11,000. Calculate the number of turns of the secondary coil of the transformer. Okay, so we simply need to apply the, the formula. We say that the number of turns of the primary coil divided by the number of turns of the secondary coil is equal to the voltage at the primary coil divided by the voltage at the secondary coil. Guys, note there's no problem even if you decide to use it like this. Remember in mathematics, this is what you do in mathematics mode, right? And it's still the same, okay? So here I'm given that I have uh, 11,000. Okay, if I just, let me just do it like this. I have 11,000 number of turns in the primary coil. So it's 11,000 multiplied by 33 kV. I'll leave it as 33 kV because it's still going to cancel there, right? Then I uh, have uh, the voltage at the primary uh, was said to be 400 kV. Okay, 400 kV multiplied by Vs. So I can divide both sides by 400 by 400. So that kV I was talking about was going to cancel here because remember we had also 33 kV. So this kV would still cancel with this kv okay this will cancel so if we divide we multiply 11,000 divide uh, multiplied by 33 we divide by 400 i'm getting uh, 908 tens 908 tens okay then that's it for today enjoy your day don't forget to subscribe so that you can see the next video when it pops up bye bye